Today in the Smuggler's Room, we're creating with foam. And we're building some Star Wars inspired shield. You shoot like a stormtrooper. You couldn't hit the broadside of a Bantha's. Hey, hey, I said no lightsaber. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian. And I'm Carissa. And welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek and this silly geek, we're finally gonna do it. We're gonna take on a full foam project. And you're not gonna use the laser cutter, right? No. Well, not entirely. N very little. I have no willpower! Actually, this project was inspired by a recent episode that Steve with SKS Props did. And he built a shield from the video game Zelda. And after I watched him build the shield, I wanted one of those. I wanted to make one. And I thought, why can't we just build a shield with a Star Wars twist? Well, you know we can't just build one. We need five. Right, we need five. We have five nephew and nieces that all need their very own Star Wars shield to go into battle with one another. Because that seems like the most responsible thing we could do. That's right. So let's go do it. old school. I like to sketch things out. It's how I work out my ideas. And with trace paper, I can do multiple overlays to work through the different stages of my thought process while fine-tuning any designs. sketching, but I'm more reckless. Let's call it organic. So really, I just pull up some reference images that I found online, and then I take a cue from Indiana Jones. I don't know, I'm making this up as I go. We drilled a hole in a long metal ruler to make a large compass. And this worked only so-so. I think in the future I may find a better way to improve on this. If any of you have a great solution for a large compass, please let us know in the comments below. Keep those cutting tools sharp when working with foam, otherwise your edges will be a mess. For my nephew Brody, I went with a Falcon-inspired shield. It seemed to fit his light speed action, and he's a bit of a little Han Solo, since he's a bit goofy, but totally capable of making the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. I drew out those recognizable panels you see on the ship. Once I had this outlined on the base foam, I could then roll out the trace paper and draw each panel as a template for the second layer of foam that I plan to use in order to give the shield some depth. With my sketches, I can figure out the layers of foam that I'm going to do for the shields. This one will have essentially three main layers to it. After figuring that out, we cut our templates for each piece of the shield.
some great techniques from foam cutters and crafters like punish props, SKS props, and more. One of those tips was using a heat gun and crunched aluminum foil to create texture on your foam. It's a super simple and inexpensive way to add a lot of depth to your project. We'll leave links to several channels you should check out below. Here's another one of those texture adding tips. This one we learned from SKS Props. You can use a wire brush and all kinds of different texture can get added to your project. It's got me looking around the shop at other tools and things we could use. Okay, okay, I'm busted. I did use a laser cutter on a couple of logos, but I promise this project is at least 98.374% non-laser cutter involved. That said, cutting foam with a laser cutter was super fun. I have a lot more testing to do to figure out the settings, but it's nice to see that it cuts clean and the HD foam is not harmful to our machine. Ooh, here's a cool tip we learned from Punish Props. You can sharpen the end of various aluminum pipes and tubes and they'll cut holes to create nice looking rivets in your project. Awesome for detailed work. Each shield has a Star Wars inspired design, as we've mentioned, that has characteristics related to the kid we're crafting these for. This shield was influenced by BB-8's various patterns, and our niece Maddie is a bouncing, smiley, sassy ball of energy, and this seemed totally fitting for her personality. We want to take a moment while Carissa is working out the design of this BB-8-inspired shield to truly thank our Patreon community or as we refer to them as, the Smugglers Guild. This amazing group of supporters allows us to keep growing this channel and create bigger and better content. Over the last several months, we've been able to plan out some great projects and additional content for everyone. And we couldn't do this without the support of the Guild. We're also working to bring more and more behind the scenes content, free downloads, Smugglers Guild Patreon only projects, and so much more this year. So if you want to support the channel and get more exclusive content access, consider having a look. Link in the description. Smugglers Guild, thank you so much for your constant support. One tool that'll really help you with your foam smithing is a Dremel tool. With the variety of sanding bits, you can create texture like Chris is doing here, as well as cleaning up the edges of your cut foam. This little tool really was extremely valuable in this project. Can I just say that I love this next shield and it was inspired by a cosplay dog harness? That's so awesome. Working with faux fur can be a messy nightmare. I learned from a lady at the fabric store that you can actually tear it and it helps from shedding too much versus cutting them with scissors. Here though, I need more than just straight lines. pretty fair to say that contact cement is the primary form of adhesive that we're using. CA glue works a lot for the small details, but contact cement will be your friend.
I wanted to point out that you can get EVA foam from a lot of places, including inexpensive floor mats from places like Harbor Freight and Walmart. We chose for most of this project to go with HD foam from SKS Props, and we purchased a set of razor knives from Punish Props. We wanna support other makers' product if we can. So if you get inspired to try out foam and you need to pick up some supplies, consider looking at product that supports the maker community. It truly helps small businesses and we get rewarded by more content we love from these makers. We'll have links below if you're interested. Okay, we've obviously mentioned other foam makers numerous times in this episode, but here's another sweet tip we picked up from SKS Props. It's a circle jig you can make for your bandsaw that cuts perfect circles. Steve has a great video that takes you through the making of this step by step, and we've linked that below as well. Some of the glue up had to be a two person job. You only get one chance with this contact cement. Krissa started the sketch for this shield for our niece, Hosanna. Initially, she took inspiration and elements that looked a bit like an H. However, when I saw this, the only thing I could think of was Ahsoka Tano. The shape just looks so much like her head tails. So this became a true Jedi shield, which fits Hosanna's reflective and creative little mind. For our nephew Connor, we went with a total empire theme to fit his inquisitive mind. In this case, I used floor mats from Harbor Freight in conjunction with HD foam. I wanted the mesh texture that's on the floor mats from Harbor Freight. It reminded me a lot of a TIE Fighter. So I took the pattern of Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, flipped it on its side, and no doubt Connor's imagination will make this one fly. One other thing I did with this shield is it didn't get painted. The colors were so perfect as it was. So I kept the colors and I just heat sealed the foam. And this was the other logo that I laser cut. I know, I love the laser cutter, what can I say? both Brian and I were most excited for this component. I'll let you experience what it is as we go, but you've probably already figured it out. Cause you know, awesome geeks are awesomely smart. Our little chatterbox Noel, this one is for you. One critical step all of you foam smiths out there already know is you have to seal your foam. There are a lot of various products you can use, but we went with good old fashioned Plasti Dip. For the handles, I twisted some simple wire together to make it a bit thicker, and then Carissa designed a pattern for those handles. We made these small since the kids' hands are pretty small, but basically just transferred the pattern to the foam and used contact cement to adhere both sides with the wire in the center.
Carissa used PVC pipe that was roughly the diameter of the little monster's arms to create the pattern for the band. This should be large enough for them to slide their arm through and hold the shields in place. Creating a successful paint job requires lots and lots and lots of layers and multiple colors for that realistic look. We want to create many different paint techniques here for these wood, material, leather, and more. So we pulled out all the paint we have. Overall with the painting we used every trick we had. For the falcon shield we did a lot of airbrush and grungy weathering with drips and streaks. On the tie fighter shield I simply airbrushed some scorch marks. And then we did some good old fashioned hand painting for the wood textures on the shields that needed it. But I'll tell you, overall I sat around mesmerized by the incredible texture that Carissa was able to bring to the leather work, metal, and pretty much everything she touched. I'm convinced we need a geekication on painting that she walks us through her entire process step by step because it's awesome.
This project as a whole really challenged us. And not just because we decided we needed to make five different shields, but it opened our minds to new materials and techniques, which is what we love most about making. It also gave us a chance to be really creative and make something for five very special people in our lives. And we hope each of our little monsters love their shields. We hope this episode sparked an interest in trying a new medium, whether that would be foam or something else you've never tried before. Because no matter what, you'll be building something out of nothing. That should be both of us. All right, ready? Yeah, that's both of us. Okay. <laughs> We're going to build something out of foam. But not with the laser cutter, right? <laughs> <All right. laughs> Did I say it wrong? What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian. And I'm Carissa. <laughs> I'm sorry. All this nibbling my fingers. <laughs> Here we go. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian. <laughs> Wait, was that right? And Carissa forgot her name. <laughs>